Hello and welcome to another Nimble video tutorial. It's been a pretty busy weekend here for me. Um, I wanted to take a quick break and uh, create a video showing a few features and things I've worked on over the past couple weeks. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Since I've migrated from the uh, native code desktop um, environment to a web JavaScript role, um, I've noticed a lot of uh, different terminology and features that you can that you end up benefiting from um, when you move into the JavaScript world. There's always uh, developers that are creating libraries and different features and cool stuff you can use in your projects. Um, today um, I want to show you one of the libraries and features that I that I was impressed with um, because it adds a really nice uh, touch to your front-end um, development portal or, or interface. The toaster library. While working on a front end project, I had a developer uh, use the term toast messages, um, and it's probably the first time I've ever heard the message, heard the, the terminology. Um, but it's basically just an animated pop up that comes up the side of the screen, fades away, and has a message to it. Um, this library called Toaster is a JavaScript library, a notification library you can use to create and add toast messages to your front end application. Um, I'm not sure of the size, but I was able to uh, recreate a nice little toast message um, effect or dialogue within Nimble in about 300, 230 lines of code. So this um, particular dialogue is not a component or widget yet. It's, it was just a dialogue. It's a, a surface, Nimble surface dialogue with a label um, embedded in it. And in 230 lines of code, I was able to use this as a, or create this as a toast message. Um, it just extends the form or dialogue events code with a create toast message, a create toast command or method, uh, the timer, and of course the process loop to make sure everything runs clean. I added some styles on activate and on resize. I want to take a moment to talk about the resize event and, and responsive design when you're um, using Nimble. Like I said, I come from a native code um, background, so when uh, C, C++ developers create Windows application, the way we handle responsive design on a desktop uh, operating system is slightly different than the way web developers handle responsive design. And I just want to give you a look at you know options because as you know, Nimble is using a lot of absolute positioning, but within the design, as I, as I add functionality, I've always uh, attempted to make um, ways to disable it along the way. <clears throat> In this case, I have disabled, for this particular dialogue, I've disabled the absolute uh, size positioning so that I can use um, a responsive auto size as you add larger messages to this toast message, it will expand vertically to make sure the entire message is displayed. And that's where these auto height settings will disable the um, ability for Nimble to use absolute position or absolute sizing on this particular dialog. But I'll demonstrate that in just a second. This is just a simple login portal. I created a Nimble, so I got just a generic login portal that I was working on. Um, classic of Nimble, you can, it has a back panel, every dialogue has a front and a back. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate a responsive design. So I have the developer tools open on this particular web browser, and what I'm going to do is dock the developer tools to the bottom of the browser. Once it's docked, um, the resize event triggers, you'll notice how the interface adjusts. If I take the same dialog and undock it to a separate window, the UI will automatically adjust and, and respond. Um, slightly different than what most web developers would do for um, a responsive design, but nonetheless it is responsive and it, it, it looks elegant. So I just wanted to share that so that you can, you know, broaden your Broaden your ideas about what responsive design is. Broaden your ideas of the way your, your user interfaces change for the user um, or adjust to different screen sizes. And without further ado, let's get into toast messages. So I have some pre-built toast message commands 
um, originally the uh, toast message command would require or most event level commands within Nimble would require what we call the fully qualified name to get to the app dialog toast and then the event um, functionality of any dialog uh, since then Oh, there's an example of it working. There's your toast message. It'll delay for six seconds and it is going to pop up from the bottom left corner. But since then, I have adjusted the toast message, I mean, adjusted the, the API to a more um, standard way of referencing the events. It's just a matter of forms, events, and then the dialog. This is to follow the normal syntax with everything Nimble related. Uh, and you'll get the pretty much the same effect. As I said, the um, toast message disables some of Nimble's ability to manipulate the Nimble kernel to manipulate the size so that it will auto adjust to larger messages and it will allow you to post multiple, me multiple messages of various um, sizes. You can control the location of the message. So that they appear anywhere you want. And every six seconds, in this case, they will fade away. You can also set the effect so that it will slide back off the screen the way it came. Um, so it's just minor toast message effects that I just decided to include, it, to include with this uh, form uh, enhancement. Um, like I said, it's only 230 lines of code, but you get a really nice effect without having to bring in an entire library. This could be expanded by adjusting the dialog, adding a cancel button, um, putting more, adding more code to the config, I mean to this create toast so that the config could allow you to control it exactly the same way that the toaster library and will probably come out to a way smaller footprint than um, just importing that library directly. Um, once again, Faster code, better code, less errors, the nimble solution. Thank you for watching.